so welcome back to another exciting episode of how to draw on procreate so today i'm going to go through some new simple steps on how we can improve our artistic capabilities on procreate so the first thing that i would like to show you is how to add text and writing to your epic piece so what you do is click the spanner and then go to add text and there we have it you just click backspace and type whatever you need to type into it so always remember your capital letters guys so then you click edit style and now you're given this wonderful selection of options so what we do we select all of the text and you've got all these fonts here you can import them which is fairly easy to do you just go on a font website and click import and it will go to your downloads and you just click import fonts and then you'd click the one that is relevant for you so I like this one so I'll put that there and then you can mess with your size of your font you can make it longer so it's all fits on one line or shorter so it goes on to a few um, you can change the opacity opacity basically means how invisible something is so you can turn it lighter or more harsh and then also you can change the color of your font so again here's that color wheel from episode one so you could make it orange so there you go there you go so what next i'm going to show you how to add depth with the different colors so what i would suggest is if you use the ink pen like i recommended in the last episode it's fairly it's like a solid block color so if i try drawing a lighter blue on top it's not transparent you can't see underneath it whereas if you change to the painting brushes and go to one of these watercolor ones which are um, more translucent and see-through uh, you can build build up your colors so here is a light blue the second time you go over it it'll make it darker anyway and the harder you press with your pencil or your finger or whatever you're using the harsher the line becomes so if you want to start adding depth you'd go back to your colour wheel, add a darker one for example start going into it like that as you can see there's quite a high contrast there that means quite a difference in colour so what we do find the middle point so see we're building it up slowly just gradually increasing the colour a little bit at a time and gradually, if this was, say, a character, it would start to look more three-dimensional. Then you could always go back over these blobs or little test marks with your ink pen, select black again. And then suddenly, your character doesn't seem quite as flat anymore. He seems three-dimensional. And obviously, if you want to work on some like circles and try testing out shadows on there, you would draw your normal circle. And again, just select your paint and start drawing into that. So you'd have the one side would be a lot darker than the other because if the light was hitting at it, the shadows would be on this side. And gradually make it lighter as you go around so that is shading and color and text so I'm now going to show you how to add some extra depth to your epic masterpiece here so here is the famous lady in the tramp image as you can see 
if you remember last time I spoke about layers. So if you remember, you can import your image into your piece to copy, but that's layer is off at the minute. And then you've got the Lady in the Tramp picture there, which is a layer. And then you've got the background and the pencil marks. So, so if you want to add some extra depth, what you do is you'd select your background layer, go over to this magic wand, and you can see there's lots of different options here. So what you might want to do is select a Gaussian Blur, which is going to blur the background a bit to make Lady in the Trap feel closer to us. So if we click Gaussian Blur, and then literally just slide your finger along the page and it'll blur out the background. Almost, this is what a camera will do. So when it's depth of field, so it'll make Lady in the Trap feel closer to us. And the less you have on, the closer to us the background will be. The further we go along this slider, the more blurred out it'll be. So that's a little trick you can use. You can also play around with an epic little thing called Liquify. This is when you go into an image. You've got all these options here which you can experiment with. And you'll start to stretch your image into some sort of Picasso piece of artwork. Scary times. And another thing we can look at on the Magic Wand tool is hue, saturation and brightness. Now this is going to make Lady and the Tramp look like they've eaten something from Alice in Wonderland. So, you can look at this hue, hue slider at the bottom. Oh my gosh, Lady has turned in to the Incredible Hulk. So you see, it's adding these crazy light effects and changing the colours of your image. Scary times. And then saturation means how um, vibrant something is. So, as you can see, you push this slider to the top they're getting a lot brighter and if you slide it down eventually it's going to almost go black and white so that's something else you can play around with say if you've done a piece of artwork and it's looking a bit dull and you want to brighten it slide that slider and then brightness I don't recommend you mess with that but it is there to darken or lighten if you want so there you go